In the first video, I spoke of distance and time being connected by velocity. Velocity is distance divided by time. Here we see a velocity of 40 kilometers per hour. Kilometers per hour is a metric unit of velocity. In this course, velocity and speed are being treated as the same thing because we're moving in one dimension. When we turn, as in turning this car, our speed may be staying the same, but the velocity is changing because the direction is changing. Now we've stopped, and our velocity is zero kilometers per hour. At zero, we're not going anywhere. The equation for velocity is distance divided by time. If I multiply both sides by the time, I will get that velocity times time is distance, or turned around, distance equals the velocity times the time. That means that if I know the velocity and I know the time, I can predict how far an object will travel. The equation lets me predict the distance that will be covered. So we have a car here moving at 30 kilometers per hour. That tells me that if the car travels for a time of 2 hours, 30 times 2, it will have traveled 60 kilometers. Velocity and speed are the same thing. In the first video, I also spoke about pace. Pace is time over distance and is often expressed in minutes per kilometer in a metric system, or minutes per mile. In physical science, we also tend to use uh, meters per second and centimeters per second. So that car moving at 30 kilometers per hour was moving at 833 centimeters per second, or 8.33 meters per second. Those are more common units in physical science, the units of meters per second and centimeters per second. But we also uh, use kilometers per hour in things like vehicles. And if it's a American vehicle, you're going to see miles per hour. Here we see a car moving at 10 kilometers per hour. That's a speed of 278 centimeters per second, 2.78 meters per second. I can use those velocities to also inform me about how far an object will go in a certain length of time. It's also the case, though, that I can tell how long it will take to go a certain distance. So if I want to know how long it might take to go 100 kilometers at 10 kilometers per hour, I can divide the distance uh, 100 by the velocity 10 and get a time of 10 hours. So we can do some basic calculations to determine how long something might take. For a runner, runners see pace. So this is 10 minutes and 51 seconds per mile. That's a speed in the metric system of 2.47 meters per second, about 247 centimeters per second. As I go faster, that pace gets smaller because it's the time uh, divided by the distance. So if I go down to 10.49, I'm doing 2.48 meters per second. At, as that number drops down to 10, say a 10 minute 37 second mile, at that point my speed has gone up to 2.53 meters per second. Don't worry about these conversions between the meters uh, per second, centimeters per second, and the pace. But the key here that I'm trying to convey is that there is speed and velocity, which are the same thing, and pace, which is the reciprocal uh, of the calculation. So 1041, that's a speed of 2.51 meters per second. The runner, too, can use these to calculate how far they will go in a certain length of time. So a runner knows how far they'll go, or how long it will take them to go 10, for example, 10 kilometers or 5 kilometers. 5 kilometers is about 3 miles. So 
uh, so five kilometers is about three miles. So if they're trying to figure out how long it will take them to run uh, five kilometers, they know that they'll have to go about 30 minutes to get five kilometers. They'll have to run for 30 minutes. 10 kilometers is going to be about 60 minutes. It also means that like a car, the runner can predict when they will arrive at a certain location uh, so that they can tell somebody, I will be at this location at this time. Runners run at a very specific and regular pace. They, they don't simply run as fast as they can or they would get tired. You run at the pace that you can maintain for the distance you know you'll be covering. So this is a bit of the math. Uh, behind and underneath the distance time velocity linkage and you should be able to work basic problems in these not the unit conversions uh, those are things you can actually do most often in Google but just basic calculations of when an object will be somewhere or how long it will take to get somewhere or how fast it will be going those are the kind of calculations we'll be looking to do in the laboratory this week we'll be going ahead and measuring the velocity of a marble and graphing the time versus distance to see the relationship we get between time versus distance for that marble. And that will be this week's lab. You'll need a marble. You'll need to have the ability to time the marble. Most smartphones these days include a stopwatch capability. So you'll need that capability. Uh, they, but most of them have that built in to their time system. And if they don't, there are apps you can use to measure time. So with a ruler to measure distance and a marble to roll and a timer, we'll be able to complete a lab on time versus distance and determine the velocity of the marble. The rest of this film is what we call B-roll. Enjoy the trip if you like. There is nothing more to listen to in this video. But if you wish to, wish to watch the rest of this scene in Colonia, feel free to do so. Enjoy the ride.